Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Cedar Flags. This episode, we're pretty much exclusively going to be doing a lot of terrain, or terraforming, and landscaping. So if that's not your thing, I'm sorry. This is a, kind of a necessary evil at this point. I would say not so much an evil, but it is. I actually really enjoy landscaping in this game. But that's just kind of a side note. Um, we are are probably going to get back into building some sort of ride within the next episode or t you know what I'm going to say probably in the next episode even if it's just a flat ride so we are going to be more <laughs> toward building rides again at some point but uh, we have some of these open spaces in the meantime that we have to kind of fulfill and get these all sorted out before we can get into the fun part of building those coasters. And I think the next roller coaster that we're going to build on, while I'm on the topic, I think we're going to do something pretty big. And I, I don't know, maybe just a, a bigger giga coaster or something like really large. Because up till this point, we've been pretty confined in the space we've been working with. I really like to open this park up a little bit and get one of those bigger rides in, in the back. So I'll go into more detail of what we're what I'm kind of thinking for the rest of this park because I've had kind of a decent idea or a, a thought along the way throughout this episode as I was working on it. I had a thought about how to make this park look a little bit better moving forward. So up until this point, we've been pretty flat, and I really want to change that. So I'll show you guys that in the live portion when we get into it in the second half of this video. But right now, all we're doing is landscaping and terraforming. Yeah, it's going to be that kind of episode. But this is kind of like a really awkward space. This is the space behind uh, the Alpine River Rush, which, by the way, I still need to make a video for the POV and all that kind of fun stuff, which is, it's on my list. I'm still working on it. I should probably get that done sooner rather than later. But uh, in the meantime, we're working in this area back here. This is uh, behind the Alpine Spirit Ride as well. So this is where the train runs through the tunnel and then into the back here. So this is kind of like a, a an area that's not necessarily going to be seen a lot. You're going to see this on the train ride. So I really didn't want to go like super in depth with like landscaping and, and doing a lot of scenery work back here. But this is a very natural area. So the first thing you saw us do was go ahead and put this lake down here. So this lake is kind of interesting we have that little lagoon that we had underneath the alpine river rush ride and i really wanted to tie this little we're, i've i've kind of been calling it an oasis back here i think somebody in the uh, live stream chat actually came up with that but i wanted to tie those two bodies of water together and you saw me go through and actually put a little bit of like a a what would be a waterfall if this game had water physics but unfortunately it doesn't and I really didn't want to go through I know a lot of you are probably thinking just go ahead and use the uh, the water effect tools that we have and just make it a waterfall I didn't want to do that I, it really hurts performance it really does if you put too many of those in and you need a lot of them to be to create a decent looking waterfall in my opinion so in the I guess in the meantime, until we maybe get water physics at some point, I'm not sure that's ever going to happen in this game. So, I mean, I don't have my hopes up. But in the meantime, I've kind of put that dried out water uh, fall back there. And that was kind of just a, a thing to show like, hey, these are connected when it rains too much. This is where the overflow goes. So that's kind of the thought process back there. We did a little bit of terrain work around the area, flanned it out a little bit, and we're actually going through and doing a little bit more terrain work over here. Now, this, honestly, I wasn't even planning on doing, but I, I really thought this area could be opened up a little bit. As you'll probably remember, we had a big hill that was pretty much obscuring a lot of the, the view of the Alpine uh, Spirit coaster, that wooden coaster we got, and a lot of the nature work. So we just did a little bit of nature work back there. I wanted to maybe try to open this up a little bit and create some sight lines back into this kind of weird section of the park. So what we did was we went ahead and flattened the hill that we had, and what we're doing is building a little bit of like a plaza over here. Now, luckily, in the last update that we got for the game, uh, a couple of tweaks were made to the path tools. So that actually, I think this these tweaks made this whole area possible. But uh, it was it was kind of an interesting little thing. So we're we're adding onto this building. We are tweaking the angle of it just a little bit. It is supposed to be a rustic 
uh, type building. So really not crisp lines are pretty okay when you do this kind of thing, when you just kind of take something and, and kind of shift it on an angle a little bit. But I uh, would end up putting a, I think, pizza stall and I think just like a, a slushy stall or something over here. But we had to make this plaza next, and this was going to be a challenge. Now, luckily, like I said... I think our terrain tool or our path tool being updated actually kind of helped us, but I was having a little bit of an issue. Um, we had to kind of go into this train tunnel and take the terrain down and clip it into the tunnel just to be able to put this path in. And then luckily we are able to then take the terrain and push it back up into the train or into the tunnel. So it really, it kind of worked out. It was a little bit of just trying to get these paths to work. And you'll notice that there's actually kind of a hole in this path over here. And I, I, instead of like trying to argue with the path system, I actually went ahead and we used this as a feature. So this was a really cool and interesting little thing. Um, we end up putting a tree that is growing through this little opening. And then of course we fill it out with some of this undergrowth that I've really, you'll see this a lot, this, this particular bush. I've used this over around the gravity mod. Um, but I do love this bush because it is kind of a, like, it's it's more of a natural feel. It doesn't seem like anybody's gone over and trimmed it. It's really just naturally growing. And you can sink that down and get a lot of different angles out of the same bush. So it really makes for a great, like, natural area uh, item, I guess. So, yeah, you're going to see that a lot throughout the episode. This is one of those things that I've been trying to do when I do uh, landscaping, and that is the the natural versus the landscaped and, like, curated landscape uh, divide that I've been trying to achieve. And usually it's a lot of this kind of shrubbery that goes into the undergrowth of this kind of more natural area. And then I've been trying to tie in a lot of the trees that we've kind of been using throughout the park. So when we first started, like the first two episodes, we had maybe four total different trees in this area um, or in the park in general. And we've been ever so slightly shifting toward a more broad scope of like foliage and stuff. So every time I try to go back and and try to tie some of that new stuff back in and i think as a whole uh eventually it's gonna look really good and we are getting to that point i i can really you can see where the the natural like landscaping has been you know coming to its own throughout this build so uh it's really uh kind of it, it's one of those things i've found to be really fun is just going in and putting plants all over the place and i really hope one of the future updates will get a lot more of those plants and different types because we've i have used a lot of them and i really want more options but anyway we're just detailing out a little bit around our shops here you'll notice if you uh, remember from i think it was the last episode uh we took these same little shop uh facades or whatever you want to call these the little wooden planks that go all the way around and it frames out the opening we took those from our last build we moved them over here it's kind of the same influence of a building so i figured this would be a perfect reapplication of that and then of course we just wanted to go ahead and put a little bit of an awning out there and we're just trying to tie some of the other elements from the front of the building that we built so long ago trying to tie that in this is basically just like an expansion of this little shop so it was kind of interesting to uh, get back here and do something that i really didn't plan on doing so anyway we're trying to create this plaza feel here so we're putting in some of these uh picnic tables of course and i really wanted to use these uh rectangular ones because we've used i think the same circular tables all over the park already that's another thing i kind of wish we got a couple more models of tables but i'm not going to be too pushy about that but anyway we're going back and putting up some signs just to fill out this wall now i'll be candid I am not a huge fan of the signs that we had there. There was a pizza pen, um, a wooden version of that, but the, what is it, the, the gulpy sign, uh, there was not like a rustic or wooden version of that. So we just kind of went with these modern chic signs. I don't know if that chic is the right word for that, but uh, it's, it's one of those things that I guess works for now. 
Uh, we could always change it or we could say screw it. It's in a very <laughs> kind of remote corner of the park. Why why even worry about it? But anyway, this is kind of moving on to the, the second part of this uh, episode here. And that is the detail and landscape work around the train station that we put in uh, throughout the previous few episodes. So there were a couple very awkward spots here. We did that amazing plaza in, I believe, the last episode. And we needed to fill out this area between the train tracks and the key... Or not, I said key walls because I'm so used to city skylines. But the, the retaining walls that we have here... Um, we needed to fill this space out a little bit and again i was trying to be more or go for the more like natural feel back here because it's one of those areas that's not gonna be you know well maintained by the park you know not a lot of maintenance people are probably gonna get back here to do all of the landscaping this is kind of like a forgotten corner of our park so i, I tried to kind of keep some more natural feel in this area and that was the original plan was to just keep it really like a natural overgrown area but in the end it looked kind of weird so I ended up going through and we uh, made a couple of little more curated beds and use these rocks like I, I tend to try to do um, to, to frame out these little planters with these rocks and it looks really cool you actually saw the the train go over this corner in particular right out of the train station is a very tight squeeze so I really wanted to make sure all of these rocks were off of the train tracks and make sure the train itself isn't clipping through now I will say that the corner of the building barely just barely doesn't hit the train and if anybody reaches their hand out it could get ugly so uh, we're gonna imagine that no one's gonna reach their hand out and our legal team is not going to have to like jump to any any sort of defense of our, our thing here but I think if we were doing this again I'd probably want a little bit more space back there but I, I don't know I, I think it's fine for now and really you probably don't even notice it unless I point it out to you so um, anyway we're just moving on trying to incorporate some of these other more wildflower type bushes over here the flowers are one thing that I, I really desperately hope we get more of in the future for this game i'm sure we'll probably get something it's just a matter of time but just like natural flowers we have a few of those bushes that are like round that you can kind of sink a lot of them down and get like a flat area of flowers i'd like to see more flatter like just broad areas of flowers that we could put into some of these beds and spaces and make it look really great but until then we're just kind of trying to you know work with what we got but you saw some of those wildflowers go in there it was just trying to I was trying to break up some of the color back there a little bit and introduce something a little bit different back there so uh, somebody in my in my live chat had suggested like yeah we're doing all this work back over in that corner for basically nothing no one's ever gonna see it except for the conductor um, but I mean, you can kind of see a glimpse of it as you're driving out of the station on the train, so I guess it wasn't all for naught, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, we did a couple of these, like, end caps where we have a, a few of these, like, tall green shrubs. These are kind of new for this area. I, I think I... I don't know if I've ever used these around the area, but it's kind of hard to describe because we're not looking at it at the moment. But those tall green, I think they're actually trees that you can kind of shrink down and make them more like uh, shrubs. So we used that a little bit, and I believe I, wanted, I went back and I put some of those back in the oasis area. And, of course, we had this kind of awkward space that we now have to go fill across from the queue and between the main paths. So we have to go over here now and try to fill this space, and it's very awkward. So I've been using a lot of rocks to try to cover up cliff faces and create more of like an interesting look in terms of like having a sheer cliff and, and bringing these terrain elements together. Um, I didn't necessarily want to do that over here because I felt like we've been doing it for so long. Why not try to change it up and do something a little bit different? So what we're doing is building this little retaining wall, and this is out of a wooden piece of a train track. I'm sure there's a name for it. I do not remember it, but it's a little, a little strut or whatever you call it on the train track. And we've, of course, used this because the train is right next to it. It's kind of like a reclaimed wood type of feel over here. So that kind of ties in over here. But what we're doing is creating a little bit of a wall. And behind that wall, we're going to go ahead and put the kind of like a planter bed. And then behind that, we're going to have multiple levels of nature. So this is 
an attempt to try to break up this area a little bit um, just because it, it was basically just a hill and I really didn't want to build a building into the hill like we have done here and there around the area but I, I don't know I didn't want to just do a sheer wall so I think in the end this area comes out pretty nicely so I guess you guys can be the judge of that but and before we get into the terraforming, of course, we just had to do a little bit of detail work around. And this was, um, I don't know. It was, it was kind of annoying to try to do. I'm basically just trying to get this to look okay. Uh, I really, I wanted to take the, the benches that we had here and space them out in a way that wasn't really bad. So it kind of complements the same thing or the benches that are across the way, but I think in the end it's okay, and it's it's really just kind of like a filler area for this park. It's just a, a very awkward space where people are going to have to walk down there under a bridge, by the way. So, yes, the bridge is something that we are going to do. You just saw me try to f finagle the path system to work a little bit, and it really wasn't having it at one point. I think we'll actually touch back on those paths uh, before this episode ends. Um, there's a few iterations of that and it was just me trying to fight the paths. But you saw some of the terrain work that we just did and now we're going ahead and putting some of these planters or the plants in this planter. And this is one of those plants that I've used so much but it's still one of my favorite things to do. And then of course we're putting some of these shrubs. So we're tying in both sides of the path work over here. And in the end I think this works really well. Now you're seeing me go ahead and take the terrain tool and create this kind of like shelf over here so this was an interesting concept and I, I don't remember if I thought of this or if somebody in the twitch chat had thought of this but it was a really interesting way to break this up now somebody in the live stream I do remember suggested maybe putting a water feature up here that would be okay we tried it but the water that you, like the ponds and stuff in this game that you you can put down they need a lot of uh, space around them in terms of terrain so it really wasn't viable over here but I do want to use more water moving forward so that's gonna be something that I'd probably talk a little bit about in the live portion when we talk about what the next few steps of this series are gonna be but we're just putting in some of these rocks right now I uh, like I said I didn't want to just do a sheer wall of rocks over here but in the end I mean we do have a lot of rocks and and from what I've found these rocks are the best way to kind of cover up a very drastic change in terrain height so this looks very natural even though it may not be natural so our, our park engineers had to come through here and and dump all these rocks down here but it makes for a very unique and kind of interesting thing you can do a lot with how many rocks we have here there's uh probably i don't know like over 10 I'd say models of rocks that you can and you can tweak here and and make like really interesting little just shapes when you when you step back and look at the lines that this creates it's really cool but you see that bed the secondary bed going in there this was a really interesting thing and then of course we had to jump back to the paths and it was uh, it was a struggle again I mean it's never easy but uh, we we eventually got it with some just tweaking and then of course we had to go through and put some custom railings on this path because we didn't want people to jump over those rocks and then fall down that cliff side so uh this i think i'm gonna speed up pretty quickly here in the time lapse so uh, it's it's really not an interesting process to watch but it is important because we did go through and do all this so we're just lining up all these posts and it's really a simple just two posts and one handrail in between them all and eventually we get this all done but that that secondary bed is really interesting to me because we we can see down to that area from up here and from below it, it you can't really see it but it adds so much because you have that tree in there you have a little bit of open space and we're eventually going to go through here and actually add a little bit of undergrowth around this area and it really just opens this space up it looks like there's actually a purpose to this space instead of it just being like a weird space that we had to fill up because we had these two very drastically different um heights in these paths so it comes out pretty good and i think i'm just we're, we're growing as a as a creator in this game and I'm learning how to use some of these 
more natural plants and stuff, and we're really creating these really realistic and really interesting looking landscape elements, and I'm really happy with how things have been turning out, and I can't wait to do more of that moving forward here. But we're moving on to the final thing that we're going to do in this time lapse, and that is this bridge. Now, originally, I didn't even intend on doing this in this episode. It was probably going to be in the next episode, but we were over here. People in the live chat were telling me thoughts and, and stuff to do with this bridge. So eventually, we just jumped into it, and I was like, all right, let's just do it for this episode. And in the next episode, we'll try to figure something more major out to do with our, our with our time so we're just putting a couple of these end caps on this bridge and we're we're keeping it as a space for for lighting somebody had suggested they really wanted to see some flags on this bridge now i do probably want to put some flags in the park somewhere but the problem was the flags that we have are huge and the customizable ones especially are very large and the other thing is that the flags are not, they're, they're reversible or they're not reversible or whatever. The image sh shows through in reverse on the other side. So that's something that we're going to have to probably counter if we ever put some sort of flag in this park. So <laughs> in the meantime, really all we did here was put these lights in and it was basically a pretty simple bridge design, but it all came out in the end pretty nicely. Now, of course, these railings we had to go through and tweak because somebody had suggested that they're probably a little too high. And when you're right, you're right. We had to go ahead and tweak them and bring them down a little bit. But this is the final thing we're doing in this time lapse. We're just kind of bringing these into a more realistic height. And so I will catch you guys over on the live portion. All right, guys, we are live here in Cedar Flags and we are looking over this kind of awkward corner of the map that we've created and we've detailed so yes this is probably the uh most natural or nature heavy episode that i think we've had so far uh not too much in terms of building stuff but it was one of those episodes that was completely necessary so let's go ahead and follow this train and let's start back here at the oasis as it's become known as so yes this is a very interesting little area it's gonna be a very great area for riders on this train to just kind of take in the view as they move through the park here i i really like how this has come out and i don't know the the design back here i really wanted to focus on not over complicating things so you're seeing there isn't actually like a bridge here per se there's just a couple of struts and some pillars that this train goes over i really didn't feel it was going to be necessary to do a whole lot of of just fine detail work back here mostly because the only time you're going to see this is when you're going down the first hill of the alpine spirit or if you're on the train itself so you'll notice there's a lot of nature work back here some of which i probably cut out of the time lapse but there are just like little things like this undergrowth that is down under the supports of alpine spirit i i kind of just did a lot of copying and pasting so it really wasn't just like meticulous work it's just something that i wanted to fill this space with now you're looking back this way and you're actually going to notice there's a lot of nature work back here right well yes and no there are actually tiers of nature work so this undergrowth this like shrub that we have going on here from above it's very sparse, but when you get down to, like, train level, it looks like this is just a very natural, very overgrown space. So it's stuff like that that I was trying to do just to kind of conserve just the amount of things that are in the park just from, like, a, a prop count standpoint. But also I was trying to fill up the space back here as good as possible. Now, I talked a little bit about this, like, fake waterfall, this dried-out waterfall. There's really not much else to mention. It is just one of those things that I put in here, and if we really wanted to, we could put some of the, some of these down over here. I really didn't feel like it was necessary, and it kind of works on its own just being there, and you could tell that if it rained too hard, this would all overflow into this little basin and everything would be perfectly fine. So yes, there is still a little bit of work to do moving through this way. Um, this is something that I probably won't bore you guys with on a time lapse, mostly because 
I'm not entirely sure what we're doing back here. It's basically just going to be a lot more nature and trees. So really just filling out this, the rest of this is going to be kind of tedious work that I'm probably just not even going to show on camera. Moving on, we've created this really cool little plaza basically out of nothing. Now, I never intended for this to even happen. You probably remember... I was saying that this space in here could probably just be like a bathroom for us or something, but plans have changed. This was kind of a spur of the moment type of thing. I just, I love how this plaza came out and I, I like that we have a little ramp here. Of course, it's wheelchair and stroller accessible like I've been trying to do throughout the park, but this is just a really interesting little thing and I love this little scenic lookout feel that's going on over here. So you have the plaza where the shops are, you have the dining area, and then if you just need a rest, you can come over what looks like it could be just like an overhang, but it's really not. It's all firmly planted above some terrain. But it just gives that effect that it's like overhanging a bunch of nature over here and creating this awesome scene. Now this is actually kind of really cool because you get a really, really majestic view of the Alpine Spirit uh, first uh, drop here. And you also get this return journey where it goes back up over here before it hits the brake runs. This is just a really awesome little area, and I love the little tree poking through the middle of it. It just adds so much, and I really didn't want to overcomplicate this. So you're seeing there isn't actually, like, a custom railing on this whole area. This is all uh, the same thing that comes with the path itself, so there's really not all that much to it. And then let's go ahead and move on to this little tiny corner. This was just a filler space that we had to put in. I think it looks great, and I'm sure the riders on the train are going to, as they catch the, like, three seconds of, of viewing it, are going to think the same thing. So not too much to talk about over here. Um, these little end caps that we put on, I love this. We're going to be seeing probably more of this tree, which... I, I think I said I wasn't using in this park, but I was actually wrong. It's one of the main trees or bushes or I don't even know what you'd classify this thing as. But this has been lining the main path for this entire time. So I, I guess I just kind of forgot about that. Moving on, you're seeing a lot more of the little... I don't even know what to call this, the little tiered landscape bed over here. This is another project that I think came out really great. And it's just, it's one of those things that it needed to be done. And it looks very natural and it looks great when you just look at it from all the angles. And that's one of those things that I try to do when I'm creating these parks or this park or whatever. Um, I'm trying to create just an ambiance from every single angle. So if everything looks very calculated and placed meticulously. Uh, even if it's meticulously placed to look natural, that's what I've been doing throughout this entire series. So this whole thing just turns out so nice, but I want to take a moment here to talk a little bit about what we're going to be seeing in the next episode or two and just moving forward here. So this train has thrown a curveball into my plans for the most part, and I think it's for the best. So I'm thinking of taking a lot of this terrain. So it's been relatively flat from what we've been working with. I'm thinking of taking it and basically cutting it down to like this level for the most part, and then getting kind of varied in terrain a little bit more. So it's a little bit more natural feeling. And then we're going to have the train line kind of run along this whole area in like more of a natural feel. So of course, this is eventually going to connect back to the other back of the park that we're going to build back here. Um, but in the meantime, this is kind of going to need to get fixed because I think in the next episode, we're going to be probably working more on this area over here. So we're going to be doing a little bit of nature work, maybe putting a flat ride down and then theming around that and then doing a lot more work on the pathing because we, I think, have to adjust a lot of what we did already over here. And then we're going to be, of course, sinking that down to this level. So, yes, there is a lot of work to do, a lot more nature work to do, but I think... I'm probably going to be going ahead and putting a ride in in the next episode because we haven't done that in a little while and I feel like getting back into that and taking a little bit of a break from the nature work and the landscaping and all that kind of fun stuff. So look forward to that and I guess I'm going to leave you guys on that. So 
If you like this episode, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you dislike this, go ahead and thumbs down. I am hoping to get this series really ramped up once I finish off the City Skylines series. We're going to be focusing more on this, so more frequent episodes are going to come out. So I'm looking forward to that. If you are, of course, let me know, and I will see you guys in the next episode.